So, our first review of the day is going to be for the film Totally Killer. Uh, totally Cl Killer is a time travel movie, uh, putting a nice spin on the whole slasher genre there, a little bit mixing some time travel. So you might get, you might say like, oh, isn't it a little bit like Happy Death Day, which also did play mm -hmm. with that concept a little bit. But that was more like Groundhog's Day in a sense of where the girl was mm -hmm. reliving the same day over and over again. Um, there was also a movie called Final Girls with uh, Tessa Farmiga, where it wasn't, I don't think that necessarily wasn't time travel. That was like it more her. Yeah, it, yeah, that wasn't really time travel. That was more uh, her actually going into a scary movie. Yeah, that was like her. She her mom was an actress in like a B uh, horror movie, and she got teleported into it, so she was able to meet her mom via the movie that she was in. So it wasn't necessarily time travel or anything like that. Here, there's actual time travel. So what happens? The concept is you have this girl, uh, the girl who you might have seen before. She's been in plenty of stuff. She was in uh, the Adventures of. Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, she was also in Mad Men. Oh no, she wasn't in Mad Men. Oh, no, no, she was. She played oh, yeah. A, yeah, she played a um the daughter. <clears throat> uh, John Draper, yeah. Yeah, she played the daughter of that. Yeah. So she was in that. Uh Kerma uh Kernan uh Simka, um, who's in Shipka, who's in here, um, who's yeah, in Mad Men in the adventures of uh the, the teenage Sabrina Witch there show, which I liked very much. I thought that was a cool horror show as well. So she's popped up into a variety of different things. Um, so she's, of course, the bitchy teenage daughter uh, here, as you always have in a lot of these movies. Um, her mom ends up getting killed by a serial killer, a serial killer long ago that plagued this little small town back in 1987 um, that killed a bunch of teenagers. And then all of a sudden it makes a return and then kills her mom. And then all of a sudden her one of her best friends just coincidentally, hey, she's got a time machine. She built a time machine for the science fair, you know, we, you know, Back when we were kids, we just made crappy little science boards, and we tried to figure out uh, yes. which coke uh, did like a, did like a baking soda volcano. Yeah, that you old know, classic right there. You know, you you know, back you trying to tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. Can you do that? You know, she's making a whole time machine. You know, just for the science <laughs> fair. But okay, um, so yeah, she decides. Oh, since there's a time machine, I'm gonna go back in time and stop the killer and figure out who the killer was. Um, in order to yeah prevent the murder of my mom, um, she had actually had a better plan than Barry did in the Flash. She actually was like, I'm actually going to try to figure out who the killer was. <laughs> just, yeah, uh, stopping the murder, but yeah, uh, but yeah. So you have that. And her mom is played by let's see, the woman from uh, Julie uh, Bowen from Ju uh, Modern Family and uh, Horrible Bosses. Yeah, Julie Bowen, who's her father. I mean, who's her mother? There, uh, people like you said from Modern Family there. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of the basic setup there uh, of the film, is this modern girl going back to the 80s uh, and a throwback to a lot of these, you know, kind of 80s slash vic that you have there. Um, I will say with this movie is it feels like somebody who just, their whole concept of the 80s just comes from VH1's I Love the 80s series, where they just kind of watch that on repeat, uh, and it's no real, it doesn't seem like a, it's a big love letter to the 80s, or you know, really has much concept understanding of the 80s that much other than like, OK, the 80s back then, you know, there's lots of jokes about this was a problematic age and there was casual racism and homophobia there, which the girl, her being from 2023, they call out. That's where a lot of the, some of the jokes and humor come from is yeah. that, you know, she's yeah, a modern that's, girl. Yeah, that's where most of the jokes in this movie come from. And for me, they they fell flat more often than they did. Yeah. Um, and Khan is the person who directed this movie and she's 50. So she grew up in the eighties. I mean, so it's like, she kind of grew up right in the tail end of the eighties. there. Yeah. And yeah, this is directed by a Nanashka Khan. Who's a mostly a, a television writer and producer. She created a, uh, she created a don't trust the bee in apartment 23. That, uh, that show with Kristen Ritter, which I think is uh, really underrated. Uh, she yeah, also created right. fresh off the boat, which starred uh, Randall park and, uh, and Constance Wu, that was uh, both of their big breaks. And back in 2018, she also directed the the Netflix movie "Always Be My Maybe" with Ali Wong, a movie that I actually really liked and I thought was really funny. Yeah, when you list her resume, like I like "Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment." I watched that show and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I also I didn't really I never saw Fresh Off the Boat, but I heard good things about Fresh Off mm -hmm. the Boat. I think it lasted like what seven seasons. I think that show did. Um, 
and speaking of Randall Park, Randall Park is also in this. He plays the sheriff uh, of the town um, in the 80s when she kind of goes back there. But I'm going to pass it around, get you guys' thoughts on here. Dusk, Ghostface. Mm. What, what are you thinking there? Slasher to slasher. <laughs> slasher to slasher. I've got movie titles for you. Halloween. Happy Death Day. Hot Tub Time Machine. And every coming of age movie from the 80s. And you get the movie we watched here. Mm. Yeah. It's just a mix mash of kind of all those things mm -hmm. put together. Um, and I wish it, you know, it felt fresher. I think a lot of the jokes fall flat uh, with a lot of that stuff. A lot of the jokes there just don't work. Like I said, it's just mm -hmm. constant like, hey, it's this modern girl back in the day of, you know, the 80s and how that would be an issue and making jokes about the, how much easier things were in the, like security wise. Like she just goes to the school. And goes like, hey, I'm I'm supposed to be in class, and there's no she doesn't check her ID, she doesn't check <laughs> she doesn't belong in the school, nothing. She just goes like, boom, just like, okay, just you're late for gym, just go in there. Um, yeah, there th there is like one joke relating to that. I think it's like uh, after one of the kills, she like uh, soaks up the killer's blood with the uh, paper towels, and is like, yeah, I got his DNA, and that, and that actually had a really funny payoff to me. Yeah, I thought that I'm was like, pretty oh right because that wasn't a thing back then. <laughs> Uh, and then I, the one joke that really got me, that really made me laugh out loud, I think the only joke in the movie was the scene where the girl, one of them dies, and then she presses the button afterwards, and then it ex it happens exactly how someone says it's going to happen. I thought that that really made me laugh out loud. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But uh, Nick, what are some of your thoughts on Totally Killer? Uh, for me, uh, yeah, Dust brought up a lot of uh, other movies that are very much like this stuff, like Happy Death Day, even... Uh, even a movie that does have a bit of a harder edge to it, like a freaky, which was also a Chris Landon movie. And I feel like this movie just doesn't really have the same bite to it. That makes the slasher bits as intense. And it's all, neither that funny. It's like most of the jokes kind of fall back on the same trope of look how problematic the eighties were. Yeah. The eighties. Yeah. Wasn't that yeah, such a yeah problematic time. And isn't that funny? I thought it was kind of like, one joke away from doing a pronoun joke or something like that like you know doing something like that uh because there's even a scene where like you know she's trying to go to a party and one of the dudes they block him in a party and she goes like unwanted touch or something like that <laughs> um you know a lot of those jokes that just don't think work at all like it's trying to play on to like maybe the sensitivity of maybe some age of people today and then trying to you know contrast that with the 80s style but it just is like okay i mean a lot of these seem like just low-hanging fruit and really not that good like i said very surface level concept of the 80s there and of and, even the generation she's coming from yeah but to what really worked about this movie for me was i think a lot of the performances of this cast like i i really liked uh kiernan shipka even in stuff that you know she's very clearly slumming it like riverdale she, riverdale she's very fun to watch and something that also worked was uh the dual casting of uh her mom who's as an adult is played by julie bowen and as a teenager is played by olivia holt who was in that disney xd show kicking it she was also in uh on a i think it was freeform's uh cloak and dagger mm. Okay. And I really ended up liking a lot of what I saw in that show. And even down to how Holt plays the younger, the younger version of that character, I see uh, Julie Bowen eventually growing into that. And th her dynamic with Shipka is very fun. Just uh, Shipka getting to see this kind of like wild teenager that used to be her, that is, uh, grows up to be her kind of overprotective, reasonably so, her overprotective mom. Mm. Yeah. Dusk, what about you? DNA evidence was first used in the criminal case of Landon Mann and Don Ashburn in 1986. The movie takes place in 1987. <laughs> How did they, the moviegoers get this wrong? That kind of detail, <laughs> I wouldn't, he's like, I would have taken a finger for that or more. <laughs> well, well, something that I think, uh, uh, actually kind of works about that because even after DNA was used in uh, uh, in a criminal case, it's like it's very notorious that police departments don't talk to each other across state lines. And that's a big plot point in that show Mindhunter, which I think takes place uh, around that same time. Mm, yeah. And then at that time, they didn't have like a worldwide database mm -hmm. at the time when they had tons of people registered 
uh, there in the criminal database, which she kind of speaks on there. Um, and, and it also didn't help that she had a hard time even describing what DNA was. You know, she was just like, it's, it's you know, it's DNA. It's, it's, you know, it's DNA. You know what I mean? It's just your thing. You know what I mean? It's inside you, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't really go with you there too much on the dynamic uh, between uh, Shipka and then the younger uh, Julie Bowman character, like with Olivia Holt. I think, you know, okay, you know, her going back in time and then seeing her mother younger and it's like, oh, my mom was a bitch the whole time. It's like, I guess you kind of could have expected that already of like Mm -hmm. her mom is not going to be exactly how her mom is. It's like if, where Happy Death Day was taking a slasher movie and putting it to a Groundhog Day. This is more, more like Heather's. Yeah, Heather's. Um, they also bring up, you know, like of course, because any time travel movie, you got to bring up Back to the Future. It's like, have you seen Back to the Future? You know, there's that thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's always that. Uh, and I guess the whole concept of the the time travel and how they just kind of work that in is like, oh yeah, she just has a time machine, whatever, and then. To, do that concept is like whatever i guess you don't need to think about it that hard i mean like dust mentioned i mean hot tub time machine it's like dudes that just get drunk and then there's a magic hot tub time machine really <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't really matter how they go back in time it's just it's such a fun movie and you have a great time watching it and it's great and also ad. and also that time travel scene is set to public enemy yeah you know what i mean so it's like it's, it's kind of fun you know you wrap you up in it um the killer you know themselves it's like not that interesting there's no really you know, good creative spin on the killer, anything creative with them. It's just like, okay, it's just somebody that stabs their victim 16 times. Okay. I mean, I, okay. I, I just was. Yeah. Michael Myers did that in the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. Yeah. You know, so I, I didn't really find anything interesting there. What, what about you all? What about the killer there? What, uh, okay. The initial scene where we get introduced to the killer, it's in a fight scene with Julie Bowen that I actually thought was kind of badass. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she does know how to, she got, you know, learn some self-defense, which is <laughs> like, know. this is something it's that like, Sidney Prescott been, should have done like exactly. five I've, movies I've, ago. I've been in self-defense since for the last like 35 years. And it was actually a really cool fight scene. And I thought it was really well filmed. Mm. Dusk, what about you? I Dusk, approve. I approve of a, of a fight scene that shows how to do a fight scene wrong. <laughs> makes it easier to kill my victims. Uh yeah, I yeah, I just kind of yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of decent. I mean, like I said, it's just something that Sydney Prescott should have learned like five movies ago and scream, <laughs> you know, something that she should have been doing. Yeah, what I but hey, but hey, but the second somebody puts on that like ghost face mask and hood, they grow to six foot three and you know have the strength of the rock. Yeah, and I guess in this movie, I guess it's following that tradition because, like, when you put on a mask, it just makes you invincible. You can get stabbed, you can get shot at, you can get hit with a a big ass log, and you just keep going. You just go like, "That's the power of the mask." (laughs) Yeah, it's like there's just there's a regular human being behind this mask. Yeah, and and when the the killer is revealed, it's like, really, this guy? Yeah. It's just like the most kind of like I don't I didn't even remember them. I was like, oh, this person. I was like, I, they didn't really have even that big of a role there. It's like you kind of forgot about them after a while. So it wasn't even really that big of a really reveal of their of, of who the killer was. Um, yeah, you probably like with the there's also an, uh, another person that kind of comes up. You're probably able to guess who the other person is going to be um, there. So yeah, uh, overall, I just kind of just thought that this was kind of a waste of time. Really. Uh, know. you know, I don't think, like you said, it's, you can see better versions of this movie, Happy Death Day or Hop to a Time Machine or, um, you know, like I mentioned, uh, Final Girls or something like that. I think those all do that stuff just much better and has much more heart to it. You know, like, you know, the, the bitchy teenage daughter realizes like she shouldn't be a bitchy teenage daughter anymore. She should, you know, be nice to her mom. Okay. You know, like I thought the dynamic to her and her mom there is kind of like, okay, there, it's just nothing too special about that or nothing. You know, too unique about that. And a lot of with these Hollywood movies, it's like, at least if you build up a reason why the daughter may not have issues with her mom, other than she's just her mom and she's just tired of her telling her what to do. Because that was one of the things in the Barbie movie. It's like, why is this girl so bitchy to her mom? Like, her mom just seems generally like a nice mom who's trying to do her best, but she's just absolutely bitchy for no reason. It's like, maybe if you offer some explanation into it, I don't know if Hollywood... Sure, it's going to be a conversation I'll have with my sister once my niece gets to that age. And 
teenagers just kind of suck. But even then, e even with that justification, in a movie where your job is to entertain, it can feel like a crutch. Yeah. Um, so, if, yeah, if you just offer some good explanation other than, yeah, it's just, she's a teenage daughter and she's her mom. Okay, I get, like I said, teenagers suck, but damn. I mean, you're not always disrespecting your parent all the time, you know what I mean? And then in Hollywood movies, that, that's what they present. It's like you're right, kind of I, I kind of felt it a little bit here with uh, kind of how overprotected. I feel like this movie should have sold more on how overprotective Julie Bowen's character was as as a Shipka's mother. Yeah. Because Maybe she even should. even in this movie, every like little objection that uh, Bowen has to Shipka like going out on Halloween, it's like perfectly reasonable. Yeah, maybe she should have been more like Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween. <laughs> you know, like if she was more like that type of mother or that type of, you could understand why she wants to kind of break away from her. You can kind of get it. You know what I mean? If she was more like that, uh, but. Uh, Dusk, you want to give your final thoughts rating, and I'll hand it to Nick, and I'll give mine. This movie is a movie. <laughs> if you've seen one horror movie, you've seen them all. This is a low stream it. Low stream it. A low stream it. Because if you're going to watch another movie, you have better classics to watch on Shudder or Tubi or any other Streaming service guy can't even keep track anymore. This movie oh. didn't do anything new. It didn't do anything bad either. It didn't set anything up high, but also didn't have that didn't have that low of a stake. It came in. It was 106 minutes, and then it was over. The mask was not bad though. Yeah. What but, type of mask yeah. was that anyway? Max Headroom, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. which okay. has no right, now, reason in it now, which has absolutely no connection <clears throat> to what it was being used for because it didn't include any technology. It didn't have any weird glitchiness. It didn't have anything that would involve technology or creepy or suspense. Just like that one hacker, bless his soul, <laughs> who hacked the television show for three minutes and and freaks people out i'm not making that up that's real look it up kids <laughs> <laughs> um so low streamer from this nick what about you uh me i i'm kind of at the same level as dusk is with this movie for me this is just kind of a low stream it i had some fun with it like i liked the uh, shipka's performance i liked the uh, her dynamic with olivia holt some of the like look how some of the jokes in this movie actually got me but for the most part it falls flat uh all of the horror stuff i thought was fine but there's so much better stuff especially like this uh stuff that came out as far as horror goes just this year even in this kind of like uh horror comedy subgenre stuff like happy death day stuff like freaky stuff like the final girls or even classics like uh shawn of the dead or hot fuzz this is just kind of a low stream. And I, I don't feel like my time was wasted with this movie. I still had some fun with it. And there was a joke at the end about kind of this uh, whole conceit of, of uh, Shipka trying to not hook her parents up too early that I thought had a funny payoff. Mm. Okay. Um, I probably feel the most negatively about the movie out of the two of you. Um, yeah, I didn't really have that much good of a time watching it. Um, like I said, amalgamation of a mix of all of the all of these different movies, which would have been, which sometimes is fine if you have great personality and you can mm -hmm. win people over that way. I don't think this movie really does. I don't think the concept of them just going to the '80s really does anything other than just go like it's the '80s and hey, the '80s were super problematic and people thought this way back then. Isn't that funny? You know what I mean? And and isn't that good? And just kind of going off of that, which is the bulk of the jokes. And I go like, eh, not really. I mean, you know, do something with it. Um, other than that, I don't think they really do. Um, Sh Shipka, who, you know, I think is a good actress, um, mm -hmm. and I like her a lot and a variety of different stuff, but here I just thought, you know, I thought she was kind of wasted here, um, in this, and even the supporting cast, when you, you know, go back and, you know, she meets the younger versions of, like, people she sees, you know, from 23, like, you know, teachers and, um, you know, sheriffs and people like that, they don't really do much with that, like, you know, the whole younger versions of them, and then, 
they also do this effect where they go back to the older versions like they do a quick like little flash of the uh, old just to let you know like this is the younger version of this person it's like okay i don't think you needed that i think you could reasonably put that together there um i guess it's not relying on people to know like oh can't remember a name more than 10 minutes i guess um so yeah could you I, I, <laughs> in all yeah. honesty yeah i guess that's true yeah maybe yeah <laughs> So maybe they're good that they, they put that in there then. Um, that felt like a post effect. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I don't think anybody's really going to know who the younger versions of these people are. So we got to put in the, yeah, like this, yeah, effect this, yeah. Effect. It did lead to only one funny joke. The only moment I left in this movie, kind of, was when mm. she sees her dad for the, the younger version of her dad. And it cuts back to the older version. And he gives like a nod. Oh, he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> I know I look pretty good, didn't I? Yeah. Um, yeah. They should have did, you know, speaking of Back to the Future, maybe that would have been funny if they did like a Back to the Future thing where, you know, the dad was trying to hit on the daughter. I don't know. Maybe that would have been like, like back, to, <laughs> back to the Future where the mom was trying to hit on the son. Maybe they should do something like that. Maybe that would have been kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, so for me, I just kind of give it a skip it for me. Mm -hmm. Tune out for me um, with this. So that was Totally Killer. Got a low streamer from Dusk and a low streamer from Nick and a skip it from me.